Google Classroom is an exciting new tool that allows teachers to utilize all the functions of Google Apps to create engaging lessons and assignments. Google Classroom is only available to organizations using Google Apps for Education, though. In this tutorial, I'll show you some of the basic functions of Classroom, including creating classes and adding students. So the first thing you'll want to do is log into your Google account, and then you can click the App Launcher button, and uh, you'll want to select More, and scroll down to Classroom. When it loads up for the first time, you should see a page that looks like this. It's a pretty simple and straightforward software. All you'll want to do is up here where it says Create Your First Class. You can go up here and click the plus button. You'll have two options. You can either join a class or create a class. Um, the join a class is mostly for students. For teachers, you'll want to click create a class. I'll show you kind of what this looks like from the student side uh, a little bit later. So click create class. And you can go ahead and enter the name of your class. I'll just make this a test class. and we'll give it a section. If you have multiple different classes in the same grade, say maybe you have three fourth grade classes and you call one section A, section B, section C, you could do that. I'll just call this one section A and click create. This will bring up the class theme for your Google Classroom. Here you can start uh, creating assignments and adding students. Um, so the first thing we'll do is show you how to add students. There's a couple ways you can do this. Number one, you'll see down here there's a class code. So if students have this code, they can join the class. So one way of doing it is you could email this code to every student in your class if you had all their email addresses um, into a contacts group. You could do it that way. Another way is you can just email a link straight through to the students that allows them to click the link to join your class. So I'll show you how to do that. First you want to click students. And over here you'll select invite. And um, what you'll see here is there is a link to your contacts page as well as the um, all contacts and the directory for your whole organization. Um, this is why it's really helpful to organize your students into contact groups in your um, Gmail contacts. So then you could just add them directly by clicking the whole group if you wanted. I'm just going to add an individual student right here. And this is, uh, by the way, this is just a fake student account. Thank you, Ed Hilton, for um, allowing me to use this to demonstrate the tutorials. So I'm just going to click on this student now and then go ahead and select invite students and then this will just send an email directly to the student so all she will have to do is go into her email click on the link and that will automatically add her to the class so now you'll see I've logged in from the student side and I just wanted to show you what this looks like uh, for all the people that you invite into your class so they will get an email that looks just like this you can instruct them to go ahead and click on it and open it up you'll see an invitation so if you want to join all I have to do is click this link and it'll bring them to this you'll just instruct them to click through and select student and maybe they can even uncheck this if they don't want them to get a bunch of email in their boxes then they'll click submit and here it will prompt them with an option to either join or decline and I will go ahead and select join and now you'll see that the student has joined your class. They will show up in your class as well as they will be able to see all the assignments and postings that happen within the classroom section. So I've jumped back over to the teacher side just to show you what this looks like now. Now you'll see that we have one student in our class. If we click on it, we can also now see our students who are in the class. In the students tab, you can also set whether or not students can post and comment to the page. Um, so just depending on your class and the teacher, uh, it's uh, totally up to you if you find that the students are goofing off and posting things that are a distraction. You can certainly turn off comments or you can make it to only the teacher can post comments. I think this is a really helpful setting. The last thing I want to show you in the basic tutorials is, you know, at the end of every school year, you're going to end up needing to make new classes uh, for the next year. And so you come into the problem, well, what am I going to do with the classroom? So let me show you just a brief example of what this looks like. If you go up in here to the um, settings menu in the top left corner, 
you'll see all of your assignments as well as all of your classes that are available. You can also see archived classes. So I just want to show you really quickly uh, what that looks like. I have a couple classes that I started with uh, this year when I was doing my student teaching and I wanted to just get them off of my main screen so I archived them. So I'll just show you what this looks like really quickly. So we'll go back to our home page and you'll see now that I've, I've unarchived that the old class and put them back in it. After a while of teaching and using Google Classroom you'll find that you'll end up with lots of different classes and from year to year you're going to need to uh, do something with the old ones so that you can have space to create new ones. So the way Classroom allows you to do this is it allows you to do one of two things. You can either archive your old classes or you can delete them. So the difference is, is when you archive classes students will still be able to access all of their files and folders. It will just um, not allow them to edit assignments anymore. Anything that you've already assigned to them or they've turned in, they won't be allowed to edit it anymore. And when you delete it, it just kind of um, wipes everything off the board. Their assignments that the students have created, all of their own content will stay but you will not have access to it anymore. You're kind of deleting your link to their assignments in Google Classroom. Now the workaround is if the students are sharing their documents with you using the uh, student portfolio method that I showed you in the Google Drive section, then you'll still have access to anything that's in their folders. So just depending on how you want to do it, you can either archive or delete or just have students share it that way. It's, it's just kind of comes down to your personal preferences. So when you archive a class you'll do so just by going to the home page of Google Classroom. Uh, you can get there by clicking these uh, three lines and then selecting home. So I'm here now I'm on the home page and you'll see this is my test section the class that we we're doing tutorials with and then this is my old class. So I'm just going to go in here and click Archive. And we'll sure uh, we can view this class in Archive Classes. Yeah, we'll click Archive. And now it doesn't show up on our home page anymore. So we're only looking at uh, the classes that we're actively working with in the school year. If you click here again, you can go to see your archived classes. And here, if you want, you can delete those if you just want to get rid of the settings or you can keep them archived. I think there's really not much reason to delete them um, unless you're just an uh, organization neat freak and you want everything looking nice and clean. I think it's easy to just let Google archive your classes so if you wanted to you could go back and access any of your old assignments or if you just wanted to see how you did something to reflect and learn how to do it a better way that would be helpful as well. So these are just a couple of the basic functions of Google Classroom. We'll get more in depth with it in the advanced functions tutorial. If you have any questions, uh, just leave them in the comments section. I'll do my best to reply to all of them. Thanks and have a good day.